In our final segment this morning, New York's next governor, whoever that may be, could inherit a $10 billion deficit if Albany doesn't act soon. Our next guest says he can fix the budget problems and fix Albany. Republican candidate for governor, Rick Lazio. Rick, good to have you here. Oh, good to, good be good on, to see you again. Good to it's, see you, too. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> it's good to be back with you. You last ran for office nine years ago. Mm -hmm. You took a beating running mm -hmm. up against Hillary Clinton. Uh, why do you want to run again? Well, you know, I've got two daughters, Diana. One's 17, and she's my oldest one. And I, like lots of parents, have started driving her around the state looking at colleges and thinking in those quiet times while you're driving, I wonder what her future will look like. Will she be close to me? Will she move away, fall in love, you know? Mm -hmm. and, or will she end up getting a great opportunity somewhere and, and have to move away or want to move away? What I, what I don't want is for her to have to feel like she has to move away because there are no job opportunities, because the cost of living is too high, because she's not proud of the state government. So I've had a great career in the public sector for the last nine years. I've been in the private sector. It's really time when things are tough for good people to step forward and to engage in the debate because there is a better way. This state is the only state I've ever called home. But you know it's a tough business running yeah, for absolutely. office. Absolutely. It's, it's New really York. Tough. It's a blood it's sport here. It is yeah. a blood sport. Are you prepared to go through that yeah, again? Abso yeah, absolutely. I should say, if, if good people turn their back and they say it's too tough, it's too inconvenient, it will cost me too much money, then you have the situation, which is what we have now. We've got a broken government that hasn't worked for 30 years, isn't working now, won't work in the future without fundamental sweeping change and without good quality people stepping forward and offering themselves. There's two, obviously you can run on the Republican ticket for, for the governor's seat, right. but there's also the Senate seat. Right. Um, and you are not interested in that, have, even though you've run for that before. You're yeah. not interested in, in going up against Kirsten Gillibrand? Yeah, it's really the difficulty that New York faces that has drawn me back into public life. I've had plenty of opportunities to run for office and to accept appointed positions over the last nine years. I've turned them down because it wasn't the right time for me. But when I was growing up, my parents taught me when your friends, your family, your neighbors are in trouble, you, you run toward them to help. You don't, you don't run the other way. And New York State now is facing the worst fiscal crisis in its history, a $45 billion three-year deficit, which is staggering in terms of the challenges that it presents to us on a whole line of different fronts. And just as importantly, we've been leading the country in net migration out. More New Yorkers moving out of New York to other states than any other country. Jobs moving out. And income, 44th out of 50 in terms of income growth. And, and I want to talk about some of your, your, your ideas, but i got one other nuts and bolts sure. question here for you. Would you stay in or will you stay in if Rudy Giuliani announces? Yeah, I can promise you two things. One is when I made the decision to get into this race, I'm going to be until the end. We're going to offer New York New Yorkers a, a voice for them to watch out for them because I think their voices are on the sideline right now in Albany. And number two is if I get elected, I'm going to bring about fundamental and sweeping change. We're going to overhaul state government the way we know it. So let's, let's talk about what you would do to overhaul state government. Mm -hmm. I know one idea you're proposing is that you get rid of the two-body legislature, yeah, essentially. Yeah. You get rid of Senate and Assembly and create one body, which is not unprecedented. I think it's been done in some other states. Absolutely. And, ev and every municipality in New York State has what we call a unicameral or single-body legislature. The city of New York, which is the largest municipality in the nation, has a single-body legislature called the city council. It's much more efficient. It's account accountable. So people know who to blame and who to praise for things that are done. Right now we've got this game playing where you've got two houses of the legislature. One passes a bill knowing the other side will never take it up. Right. So wink, wink, nod, nod. Or, or sometimes worse still, they, they pass different versions of the bill that, that gets negotiated out in, in the back room in a very undemocratic way. So you get rid of all that and people have a chance to look at a proper debate where you've got bills that get amended and you know who's responsible for progress and you know who's responsible for creating roadblocks. You'd have to call a constitutional convention you you for would. that, and yeah. you know how difficult that is yes. to do. So, I mean, how realistic is this kind well, of proposal? This New York State government needs to, we need to rethink state government the way we know it. We need to rebuild it. It's like patching a leaky roof, right? You've been patching it for five years, 10 years, 15 years. At some point, you've got to just bite the bullet and decide you've got to replace the roof entirely. And that's where we are with New York State government. It's failing us on almost every front. We're not creating jobs. The taxes are crushing seniors, singles families, uh, businesses, 
Uh, we're not helping our secondary education, post-secondary education universities to be everything they could be. They should be the best in the world. They can be the best in the world. But we've got a New York State government in Albany that worries only about the next election, mm -hmm. its, its, own, its own survival. And that's what's got to change. And we've got to begin by really focusing on getting our fiscal house in order. So people say, what you're talking about is difficult. I said, of course it's difficult, but it's necessary. So, you know, you know we're facing massive, massive deficits in this mm -hmm. state. What's something you'd cut? Would you, well, cut? would you cut Medicaid in this state? Uh, would you cut education? Would you make some of those tough cuts? Sure. I think you've got to be very realistic and very straight with the people of New York. We've got a massive, massive uh, shortfall right now. A structural, what they call a, economists call a structural deficit, meaning it, it's, it's the spending is, is increasing at a rate that doesn't keep up with the revenues coming in, the tax revenues coming in. It's not going to close the gap by itself. So you have to put all kinds of things uh, on the table, uh, including getting rid of all the legislative line items, including a unicameral legislature, including looking at ways in which we can save money on health care. And, uh, and I'll give you one example. For example, with respect to the homeless population that, that it goes in and uses a lot of emergency services in health care, and we want to be compassionate, we want to support people who are homeless. We need to, if we really have compassion, we'll find permanent solutions for homelessness. We'll get them a permanent home, we'll get supportive services, and we'll end this revolving door mm -hmm. where people go into emergency rooms and use very, very expensive services when what they really need is on-site support. So basically, we need to get back into the business of creating jobs and finding solutions and not just spending for the status quo, which is what Albany's doing right now. And not a very good job at that either. We, we, we saw some big changes in these last elections. You've got a Republican governor yeah. now in the state of New yeah. Jersey. Uh, what lesson did you get out of watching you know, election there's a, there's a few things. First of all, that the polls didn't pick up on this massive change, that there is a real sentiment out there. People are disillusioned. They're disappointed in government. And then many people are angry with government. They feel like they're not listening to them. Again, they're watching out for themselves. They know that government is working for the career politicians, certainly in Albany, but they're not sure that it's working for them. So whether it's Trenton in New Jersey, where you saw this massive turnover in government, uh, where the, you know, Chris Christie got badly outspent, was, was uh, down in the polls at many times and came back and won, or in some of the suburban areas of New York mm -hmm. in, in Dutchess County where the legislature uh, changed hands, in, in Westchester where the uh, Republican Bob Astorino lost by 16 points, now he won right. by 16 points, and in Nassau County where it looks like Republicans are going to win that. Okay. Uh, really dramatic change. Big change. Uh, we're going to have to leave it at that because I am out of time. But okay. We'll have you back on the show. <laughs> Great. Okay? And that'll do it for this edition of Up Close. If you missed any of today's program, you can catch it again on our website, 7 on I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Diana Williams. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a good one.